After the general terminal is turned on, it will display a menu page of the terminal, which is a main page of the terminal. So first we need to go to the advanced settings, VCS related settings, VCS server settings. And we need to select the IP of the deployment server. After filling in, select save. The HTTP port will obtain it automatically. So there is no need to operate it. Next is the account login. At this time we can turn on automatic login, then select the account and password assigned by the server, then select login, it can be seen that we logged into an account, and the name of the venue corresponding to the account. There will be two meetings in the meeting list, which are already reserved on the server, and can be joined directly. When joining a private meeting, as you can see, after joining the private meeting, there is a send audio, which can be turned off. After turning it off, the local microphone is muted. Similarly, there is a send video, after turn it off, other venues will not be able to see the local camera footage. Mainstream sharing. After accessing the auxiliary stream, the center can share PPT and Word documents on the local computer. Then you can see, if there is an assistant, the computer screen will be displayed on the left. End sharing. Personnel list. Because we didn't apply for the chairman, the personnel list does not have a conference control function, so there is no control function at this time. We can apply for the chairman, enter password, and click OK. When upgrading the protagonist, it will generally display a pop-up window, applying for a chairman of the entire venue. So when we turn back to the personnel list, we can see the list, and at this time, some conference control functions are already available. You can hang up the local or remote venue, and then control it. You can increase or decrease the bandwidth of the local or remote end, adjust the dividing frequency of each terminal and the local terminal, and then control it by pressing the button like this. You can control the local or remote camera to adjust up, down, left, and right, including zooming. Next is the microphone mute. You can turn off the local or remote microphone. Similarly, you can also turn off the local or remote video. Then is the layout. There are three layout modes. The first mode is automatic split screen. After it is turned on, it will select the appropriate screen layout according to the number of current terminals to show the venue. The second mode is autofill. After selecting autofill, it will fill the venue screen according to the layout you selected. The third one is disabled mode. In this mode, after you select the layout, it will not automatically fill in the screen of the subvenue. You need to manually open the subvenue screen below in the personnel list. Also there is an auxiliary flow full screen function. After turning on, when you share the auxiliary stream, it will display your computer's desktop in full screen. Or when the remote terminal shares dual streams, the remote desktop can be fully displayed. Chairman synchronization function. So what does this function mean? It is mainly to synchronize the content watched in the following subvenues. For example, what content the chairman is watching. Then what content will be watched in the following subvenues. Chairman speaking. When clicking on the chairman speaking, the following subvenues will only be able to watch the chairman venue, and the chairman venue is free to choose to watch other venues. Then there is the banner sending. After entering the banner content, select OK. Then we can see that the content of the banner has been displayed. Then there is the meeting lock. After locking the meeting, the local conference can be locked. For example, if you lock the current meeting, then other terminals will not be able to enter the meeting. Meeting data. The meeting data contains an electronic whiteboard function. Press and hold one of the face keys of the mouse to make an annotation on the whiteboard. The thickness, color, and shape of the line is optional. And you can select the eraser tool to erase the unwanted ones like this. The shape can also be changed. You can change the background to black, white, and other pictures. You can delete the current page, then you can save the revised page and then exit the revision. Next is the file sharing. If the terminal has access to a USB flash drive, then you can upload and download files. You can share your local files and then download them to the remote terminal. If there are shared files at the remote terminal, you can also download the file at the remote terminal. Next is the voting function. After initiating a vote, the topics and options for your vote will be seen in the subvenues below. The voting mainly includes voting topics, voting options, and some voting permissions. Then there is a sign-in function. After selecting to initiate a sign-in topic, 
a QR code will be generated. Then you can use mobile phone to scan the QR code to sign in. Next is the more functions. It includes inviting other terminals to join the meeting. We can see that there is another corresponding account. If it is online, then we can tick and invite. The following is the video polling. After selecting the video polling window, you can set the polling time to 10 seconds or 20 seconds, then select the venue that exists in the conference at this time to start polling. Voice activation. After selecting the voice activation window, click start. Then whoever speaks will display an entrance screen of that person. Apply to speak. If your terminal is banned by the chairman, you can finally apply to speak. Then the rolling subtitles enter. After entering the font for the rolling subtitles, click send, then a font for the rolling subtitles will pop up below. Media information. At this time, the information status of the audio and video auxiliary streams in the conference can be seen. About the video, you can mainly see the protocol, format, code rate, sent data packet size, packet loss rate, real-time frame rate, jitter, and round-trip delay, etc. Then end meeting, you can end the current meeting, return to a main page of the terminal. Next let's talk about the standard meeting entry process. Similarly, enter the conference list and you can see that there are two conferences. This meeting is a standard meeting, click to join. After joining, there will be a setting for sending audio. After turning off, the local venue will be muted. And the setting for sending video, after turning off, the local screen will be closed. Media information. It is mainly the status display of the current video and audio. Then there is the auxiliary stream sharing function. After sharing, the computer desktop, PPT or other content collected by the terminal can be shared with other venues for viewing. Ok let's finish sharing. This is a local layout display of the terminal. You can see that we can choose a layout of remote mainstream and local mainstream. The lower right corner will display the current local mainstream screens. There are also other layouts optional, such as a setting of remote mainstream plus local mainstream to split screen. Next is the recording. After clicking record, if you have access to a USB flash drive, the audio and video in the meeting will be recorded. Then this is the relevant control settings of the camera. The keyboard function is mainly used to deal with the situation of setting passwords during meetings. At this time we can enter the password and click the hashtag key to end. Then this is the conference data function. You can also control the whiteboard during the meeting. By pressing and holding the mouse button on the remote control, you can make annotations and descriptions. Then there is the file sharing. Files can be uploaded and downloaded by inserting a USB flash drive or hard disk. Then is the voting function. After initiating a vote, you can choose the topics and options related to the vote, and some permission settings for the vote. Then end the meeting. You can end the current meeting and exit to a main page of the terminal. Generally, the common faults are some faults of audio and video. At this time, we can select the audio system diagnosis function in the system management, there is a audio test here. Sound test. The sound test is mainly to verify the local audio output function. At this time we see that there is no audio output. We can check in the advanced settings, there will be a device selection in the audio settings. Because now we are connected to a USB omnidirectional microphone, so we need to select the USB relevant settings, select USB omnidirectional microphone and confirm, then let's test the sound again. We're caught in its tractor beam, it's pulling us in. Now we have sound output, which means the audio output of the terminal is normal. Next we test audio loopback. What is the main purpose of the loopback test to verify? It is to verify whether an input of the local audio of the terminal is normal, click OK. Then we can speak to the microphone, hello. One, two, three. Now the microphone has sound, which means that the input of the terminal is normal. Next is the video loopback test. The video loopback test is mainly a diagnosis to verify whether the terminal's collection of mainstream and auxiliary streams is normal. At this time we can see that there is a camera image on the left, but not on the right. Because at this time, the computer screen on the right side is not captured, so there is no screen on it. If there is a screen connection, a computer screen or a screen capturing the stream will be displayed on the right. Click Finish. If you feel that the sound is a little low during the meeting, then we can set in the call settings. 
There is an audio setting, you can turn on the automatic gain, click OK. After turn on, it will increase or decrease the volume appropriately according to the volume you input. There is also a ping function in the system diagnosis. Enter the IP address of the opposite hardware terminal or the server IP, sometimes we cannot log in to the account assigned by the server. At this time, we can enter the IP of the server. We can select to ping to see if its IP is accessible, right-click to confirm. If the IP is entered incorrectly, it means that it cannot be ping at this time. Let's enter it again, and then ping it again. Then we can see that the packet loss at this time is 0%, which means that the network is smooth at this time. Then this is the restart button, which can restart the terminal. And this is a packet capture tool for the network, it needs to be connected to the USB flash drive before the packet capture operation can be performed, it needs to store the captured network data packets in the USB flash drive. Okay, that's all.